Kyle, why don't you intro this one? Oh, God. <laughs> Good job, Kyle. Oh, I, I didn't think you were actually <laughs> serious about that. <laughs> No, okay, hi everybody. Welcome. It's time for Atomic Radio Hour. How are you? I'm Vince. I'm I'm your host. I'm also here with my buddy. Just your buddy. My. We want to say my lover. I'm I, le- letting you introduce I, yourself. I'm that useless to you that you can't direct oh me by my, my name. Oh my god. This is Kyle, everyone. Some people Thank might you. be familiar with you, Kyle. I just thought like this is my buddy, and then hi, I'm Kyle. That's where that, that's where my head was at. How have you been? What's going on? I've been all right. Yeah, just all right. Yeah, just having some weird stuff with my teeth and my jaw, and it's, oh, it's just, when it rains, it pours. Been annoying. Right? <laughs> I know. Yeah, Kyle. We both yep. saw a film. We're not going to talk about it too much. Mm-hmm. You and I have worked on something. Um, you and I saw what is possibly the greatest comic book movie ever made. Yeah possibly live action comic book movie ever made uh hey everybody if you haven't seen the batman yet go see the batman yeah go see it go see the batman right now like this is the only time i'm ever going to tell you to stop listening but stop listening and go see the batman it's so good it's really good it's so unbelievably good oh what are you doing what are you playing how you been What's going on? Sorry. I wanted to get that out of the way. I just want to talk about Batman more, but like, <laughs> I feel like you can't talk about it without spoiling it. And like, I don't know anybody here that has seen it yet, so I can't really talk about it. Right. But what's going on? What have you been playing? What have you been up to? Uh, just trying to, you know, I think like I've been playing some Dark Souls 2, but like, mm. I've been having like weird jaw aches, I guess. I don't know. Like, I, I told you about my like weird problem with my tooth i felt like a weird feeling that one night we talked and then like that went away but mm. like i felt like my jaw just kind of not like hurts but like kind of just like oh i've been chewing a lot you know what i mean like it just feels like ugh. like like tired tired almost like ah uh, do you grind tired. your teeth i no. when you sleep no as far as i know i, I don't because sometimes I do. It's like a thing that like I do it. My brother does it. I think my mom might do it. Uh, it's just the thing that like when I wake up, sometimes my jaw hurts a little bit because I was grinding my teeth. I don't know why I do it. Like it's just like a thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I think it's I think it's a mixture of like not wanting to move my teeth because I whatever weird mm-hmm. sensation I felt mixed with like me thinking constantly about it. Uh, yeah, you thinking about it becomes the worst part. I yeah, when I'm distracted and like doing other stuff, I don't even think about it. And then when I sit down, I go think about it uh, right there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like now, I'm like talking. I'm not thinking about thinking it, about and then it. I'm yeah. gonna think about it, and I'm gonna feel it. See, that's the thing. Like the insides of my cheek, when I get anxious or when I'm really, really focused on something, I chew the insides of my cheek. So yeah, like, it's one too. of those things that I like don't notice until I notice it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so I'm hoping it's nothing serious. I'm going to a dentist tomorrow, but like mm, let me know what happens, please. Yeah. You going to the one right there by the yeah. thing on the way? Yeah. <laughs> I like how we have this use this like makeshift get around talking about other things to talk about fat mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's um, the one. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I did the most fallout shit at work. The most Fallout shit at work. So there's this there's this 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 person I work with who knows that I'm really into Fallout, right? And I hear from behind me someone go, "Hey, we found this old gumball machine, but it looks like on top there's a key, and we don't have the key. Does anybody know how to get into a gumball machine?" And I turn around and I was like, "Oh, hey, I worked at a job once where we found an old gumball machine." And me and like two other people got in there with tools and took it apart. And I was like, I could probably break into it. So Kyle, like a surgeon, like a doctor, I sat down and I like laid out all these tools that I was given. They were like, here's two different screwdrivers. Here's two different metal bits. Here, Here's like pliers. Here's this and that. And I just went, I need a flathead screwdriver and a bobby pin. Right? Right. My entire life has been waiting for this moment, Kyle. <laughs> so I, I I don't know if you know this, but Bobby – I don't imagine you would. Bobby pins have like this little plastic wax bit on the end of them. Right. 
Didn't know this. So I get a lighter. I'm sitting there. I look like I'm a crackhead heating the pipe up. Like, I'm just sitting there, like, <laughs> or, like, trying to, like, uh, seal a joint. Like, I'm sitting there just, like, shh, on this bobby pin, try to rip off that plastic wax bit. And then I'm watching videos and, like, you know, I'm doing what you do in Fallout. And I'm, like, putting the bobby pin in there and just kind of, like, shaking it around and, like, jamming it in there real hard and, like, moving it. And, like, using the screwdriver like you do in the game, pushing it in the opposite motion to open it up, right? Dude, I'm sitting there. It's filled with M&Ms, by the way. Filled with M&Ms, like a quarter of the way, a third of the way, right? These M&Ms were clearly sitting in there for, like, years. Like, <laughs> one of them was, like, molded into crepid. And <laughs> I, I, I go and I open. I'm trying to open it. And all of a sudden, the mechanism on top for, like, the lock clicks to the left and i go i did it i got it like i'm freaking out right and i'm going holy shit i can't believe i did it freaking out and then like i push it a little more and a little more and eventually the whole mechanism just unscrewed out of it and uh someone's like holy shit my friend goes holy shit you actually did it and i went i just i just picked a lock with a bobby pin and a screwdriver and they're like yeah i know and i went no 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 I just picked a lock with a bobby pin and a screwdriver. And they look at me like, oh, this is this is a big moment for you. Isn't it Fallout, man? And I was like, yes, <laughs> very much so. Like, uh, plus years of, of practice has gotten me here. It was really cool. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I had a good ass That's time. That's cool. Yeah. It was one of those things where it's like, <gasps> but yeah. Kyle, you have some things in, in the notes that you put that I'd very much wish that uh, we could talk. Let's do the first one. <sighs> yeah. So, if you're planning on playing GTA Online on PS5 or Xbox, whatever, or mm -hmm. a next-gen console, or, uh, it's not cross-gen. That's wild. And when you migrate your character, it does say a warning, and I kind of just, like, initially skipped it because I didn't think of it. But yeah. it will delete your old character off your old console. So, so you just... I did that because I was thinking, oh, cross-gen. It will be cross-gen, yeah. and, like, oh, my old character will still be on my PS4, and, like, it won't, you know, they won't sync up. So, like, I can have one character going if I ever wanted to go back, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not the case. I cannot play with anybody now until somebody buys a PS5 and plays GTA Online. Can you not play GTA 4 Online whatsoever? Like, what if you just made a new character? Uh, that's what I just did. But, again, I lost... I didn't lose anything. I cannot play my character. No, 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 I know, I know, but I'm saying, like, if we just jump on just to, like, dick around for a little while, like, why not just make a new guy? Like, yeah, that, you're at level one, but, like... That's what I did, it's just, again, like, I don't have any of my stuff, though, you know? No, I'm absolutely with you. I know that suit that you have that took far too long to get. Not really, it's just, I got that from the cards. No, I know, but I'm saying, like, that's, I did that with another friend of ours by ourselves, and that's a pain in the ass to do. He missed one. He just doesn't have the suit because he missed one, mm. and it doesn't, like, add markers. I'm sorry that happened. Yeah, I'm not – I'm, like, sucks, and then, but at the same time, it's like, okay. Yeah, in four years when everyone has PS5s and we're all playing GTA, you're going to be like, oh, shit, here's my guy. I forgot yeah. about him. My GTA Online <laughs> character, and then GTA 6 will be out by then, and it'll be like, oh. <laughs> yeah, and GTA 6 will come out, and they'll be like, hey – um, you you're gonna have to wait because remember they did that with five when five dropped. Yep. I um I have some bad news. I did a bad thing. Did you? It, it was an accident. I broke the bottle. Oh, that's what that was. Yeah. I was waiting for you to uh, send me something after you uh, put that in uh, the Discord. I I feel like such a schmuck. I feel like such a f asshole because of this. I don't have a big kitchen. Like, I have my sink and then, like, the sink space of, um, the sink space of, like, countertop space, right? Mm hmm. So I'm trying to, like, do my dishes and move things around. And I drink out of old wine. I mean, that's the meme. That's the not wine meme, right? 
and I put the wine bo- I put two wine bottles, the one you gave me and another one on top of my microwave because it's it's literally my microwave it's my um, sink to the side of it is my microwave to the other side is a very small spot that I have to work with. And I like to cook. This hurts me. And I had two bottles on top of the microwave and as I'm moving things around, the first bottle drops. That is not the bottle you gave me. And hits the ground. It falls and I'm juggling it like it's a like it's a cartoon, right? Juggling it and it hits the ground right. and bounces. It bounces. I didn't even realize the other bottle, the one you had given me, was falling. Out of like my peripheral vision, I just see it drop and it just hit the ground and shattered into a million pieces. And I'm sitting there going, the Oof. greatest gift I've ever been given. Just gone. Just like that. Kyle, I tried to save I tried to save the 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 cover of it, like the face that was all the etching. Yeah. Like I I I dude, I'm so sorry. Like I feel like such a shithead. Like no, I, I mean can't it, it was a glass bottle, like it was probably eventually <laughs> I mean but I wish it was just the top of it. Right. You know what I mean? Like I wish it was just because I could have sand I could have bought cheap sandpaper, sanded it down, maybe put a long candle in it and kept it. Like the yeah. fact that I couldn't keep any part of it killed the only part that wasn't ta- intact was the neck. Right. I'm like I I felt like such a shit. I was like I was like afraid to tell you. I, I, I when you posted in Discord, I think I was talking to Alex. And I'm like, oh, I think Vince broke the bottle. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to text me. <laughs> I dude, I like I don't know about you, but if I ever have to like think, like really, really think, like I'm in a tough spot. Like you know, my wife just left me. Like I don't know what to do. She took the kids and the dog. I go sit on the toilet. I might have my pants on. I might not. Depends on how I'm feeling. I, I sat on the toilet just to think. I'm like, how am I going to tell Kyle? <laughs> Like, I just, I, I'm really sorry. Like, I'm really, really I, sorry. I mean, like, it's okay. It was the, Kyle, it's the nicest thing anybody's ever done. For, the most thoughtful thing anybody's ever done. For, I'm sitting there going, like, who did I fuck over for this to happen? <laughs> so, I guess we're back to the not wine, green wine bottle. I'm sorry, Papa. You're Don't fine. Yell. I promise I won't burn the roast again. <laughs> But there is some good news that you sent me, Kyle. I called my mom when you sent me this. Yeah, I, I was, I was so. If you don't live in this, there's two countries that observe daylight savings time, and currently it's the U.S. and I want to say the Philippines. I don't really care what other country does it because it's not important because we do it for such a dumb reason. Kyle was so. Kyle, you you did this to me on my lunch break too. Was so nice to bless me. With this article that the U.S. Senate has passed a unanimous bill that they're going to get rid of daylight savings time if the House can agree. I'm not here to teach you about American politics because I don't understand them. But daylight savings time is fucking stupid. It's so dumb. We did it when like... When like 70% of every town was farmers and now it's like 2% of the entire population is farmers and we set the clocks back so they have a little extra sunlight. If you want more sunlight, get out of bed earlier. I, my entire week has been screwed. My I don't know about you, Kyle. My entire week has been f- up. I'm sitting here like normally, you know me, I normally get off PlayStation like 9, 9.30, wind down. I'm asleep by like 10.30. I'm a good Christian boy, you know? I can't go to bed. Like I'm sitting there going, oh, it's 930 now, but that means it's really 1030. And then I'm asleep and then I wake up and I'm like, why do we do this? Why do we give these farmers this leeway? And the fact that – and here's the best part. It's going to be the uh, the fall version. <laughs> the fall version in uh, 2023, right? Yeah, 2023. Meaning it's that extra hour you get to sleep. That is going to be – the best hour of sleep I've ever gotten in my life. I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited about this. Yep, time is going to be normal now. We're, we're going to be like regular people, Kyle. We're yep. not going to be like these... Ba- now if we can just move away from the imperial system and get the metric system, we're going to be like a real country. Hmm. And then we can tackle healthcare. <laughs> time to move on to lore. Before we get to Laura, I got to thank the Patreon because of you guys. I can continue to do this 
I'm going to do it with or without you. But, you know, it's nice to have uh, support and I can buy these things for the show that help me improve it and make it a little better. So thank you to the Patreon. Starting from the tippity top, we have to thank the OG Noah. Thank you, Noah. Thank you as well to Danny. Thank you. Then we have to thank Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. And last but certainly not least, we have to thank TP. Thank you, TP. Like I said, you guys are loved and appreciated. And because of you, I continue to do this. But now we have to move on to the lore. Now, if you've been keeping up, following along at home, you'll know that I added a new channel in the Discord just for lore. And now I've been trying to get more into pictures and have people kind of say to me what they want. Behind me will be pretty much every submission. Here's one. Here's another. Here's the third one. Here's one that I just like. Should have mentioned this before I started doing this gag. I asked, what is, just, just put, let me, let me, let me read it directly. Whoever shares the best picture of breakfast food wins, any kind, just post a delicious platter of breakfast. I love breakfast. You have until Tuesday at this time, whatever, whatever, right? Again, here's another submission. I'm gonna hate myself for doing this. Here's another picture of breakfast. Here's another picture of breakfast. One more. Another. But the person who won is the deadly lampshade. Behind me, you'll see, is Lamp's submission. You might be sitting there saying to yourself, that doesn't look like, doesn't look like a delicious smorgasbord of, of fruits and chicken ovum and swine carcass and, and rounded wheat and flour into delicious pancakes adorned with sticky tree goo. There's no biscuits. There's no crumpets. There's no tea. There's no coffee. There's no orange juice. No. What you see right here is a working man's meal. You see the meal, the breakfast of champions. You see behind you. A man who woke up late has to be at a, a job where he works 12 hours a day, breaks his back to, su to, to support his family. You wake up, you got 20 minutes, 20 minutes to leave the door so you're not late for work, but you got a shit shower and shave, baby. What are you going to do? You get that toaster oven going, you grab whatever you can find, a little sauce, a little cheese, fuck it, pepperoni. And that's how you get this beautiful concoction. This is what... I feel like everybody eats in the morning. I love breakfast food. Again, here's a picture of a Denny's. Now I'm at a Denny's. I love green screen. But not everybody eats like this. But everybody, I feel like, eats like this. So the Deadly Lampshade won with his submission of breakfast. Again, should still be behind me. And his choice this week was on Christine Royce from New Vegas, but also kind of dead money. And also kind of uh, Old World Blues and kind of also Lonesome Road. They're all kind of connected in, in, in a way. So if you want to hear any lore, and I mean any lore in particular, make sure you're in the Discord because once a week I will ask a question. First person to get the question right gets to choose lore for the week. And this week's lore is on Christine Royce. Now... Christine is a former scribe of the Brotherhood of Steel. She does have a relationship with Veronica Santagello. And I believe I talk about that a little bit more in my notes. Something I feel like nobody, I, I was like thinking I might do something about this. I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody cover the ranks of the Brotherhood. Because it just kind of seemed like there's scribes, there's initiates, there's like knights. There's paladins and then there's elders. There's much more. Um, so she's a former scribe and it goes squire, hopeful, aspirant, initiate, scribe, knight, knight sergeant, knight ca captain, lancer captain, paladin, sentinel, elder, and then high elder. Some of these are neat because hopeful is only in 76 and sentinel outside of the soul survivor if he goes the brotherhood route the only other sentinel is Sarah Lyons. Aspirants are only in Fallout 4. I don't know what aspirant means. I, do you have a headache? You need to need to take a pill to fix that? I don't know. Squires are three and four, but like initiates are all of them. 
it was neat. I don't think anybody's ta- as far as I know, I don't I haven't seen anybody talk about the ranking of the Brotherhood and what that entails really. She's a member of the circle in the Brotherhood. It's a small collective uh, and they talk about it a little actually let me bring it up on the wiki. There's nothing saying exactly what the circle is other than it's a collective of brotherhood people, brotherhood knights and scribes. Um, maybe a paladin or two. All it says here is after the Brotherhood was defeated, Helios won. Christine Royce was sent after to go find uh, Father Elijah, right? Now, in behind the scenes, it says, according to Chris Avalon, the group was formed by hardliners in the Brotherhood of Steel who believed the rest of the organization had drifted from the original principles of preserving tech. So the way... It's presented, and I always meme on the wiki, but the way it's presented is that it seems like the Circle was a much smaller group. This almost makes it sound like the Circle is that group of the Brotherhood that we find in the Mojave. I'm not quite sure where it falls exactly, but either way, I just wanted to touch upon that real quick. Now, she's sent to find Elijah after the disappearance, the disappearance of him and the annexation of the NCR. She talks about how it gets, it got so hectic. Uh, Veronica does a lot too about how it got hectic and things kind of went one way and then the other. And then all of a sudden they're looking for him and they don't know where he is. And next thing you know, McNamara is in charge. She tracks him down all the way to the big empty, big mountain, right? And when she finds him, he's in Little Yangtze, which is a Chinese-American internment camp. I don't know if I have to explain this, um, but during World War II, Jewish people, along with a myriad of other people, were put inside of internment camps. And uh, Americans, the U.S. government, did the same thing to Japanese people. This, this happened. They put Chinese-Americans in internment camps during the war thinking there could be something. It's actually one of my favorite little pieces of old world history because you get to see how awful people are. And the fact that this is where like the bomb collars that Elijah gets for dead money come from, that he used these people as like, I I talk about it a bit more. He uses them as like these walking landmines that he's just like, go. Uh, If you go to little Yangtze and big mountain and you walk, to the gate, the, the ghouls, I mean, they've been there for over 200 years. They'll rush to the gate and they'll, you'll just see the, like the, the explosion, their, their heads go up. Now, when she enters, Elijah escapes, he gets away. An explosion goes off and she's ambushed by, um, these security robots. Christine then gets taken to the Y17 medical facility and there's these, uh, security robots that attacked. Then she assumes they were to take anybody who got wounded to the medical facility. Ulysses has a, an explosion that goes off that Christine records in a hollow tape. You can hear the explosion go off and he comes and he takes her to this cave. And while, whilst they're in this cave, they kind of discuss politics and they talk about uh, the fallings of modern society. They talk about the Legion. They talk about NCR. He talks to her about the brotherhood. Uh, he talks to her about tribes in America and what it means to carry the flag on your back and whatever long sentences he says that don't have pejoratives or nouns or whatever in them. Ulysses eventually meets the think tank and shortly after that, him and Christine split. He goes the way of the divide. They even speak about the divide a little bit. She talks about how there's nothing there. It's a wasteland, this and that. Christine then tries to track down Elijah further after the split. She leaves with the Mark I stealth suit and leaves her old armor and sniper rifle behind. She then tracks Father Elijah to the Sierra Madre, the casino and resort, and is captured while there by Dog, the nightkin slave of Father Elijah, and is fitted with a bomb collar, the same bomb collar he got at Little Yangtze. At some point in time, Dean Domino takes her and puts her in an auto dock in the medical district in the villa, and her vocal cords are ripped out of her. Uh, It's why she cannot talk the entire time you're with her until the end, which I'm going to get to in a moment. The auto dock redid this process for two weeks. She was stuck in there and it just kind of kept looping with her in there. Because of this, she has developed severe claustrophobia. She was in an auto, a a Pulowski, 
it's the same size for a Pulaski Preservation and an auto dock uh, for two weeks, having the surgery done on her throat continuously to rip out her vocal cords. She can later, she later will gain her voice in Vera Keys's own hotel suite inside of the Madre Hotel. Surgery was done on her, on her vocal cords where it was ripped out and replaced with Vera Keys's voice. And she couldn't talk because she physically couldn't speak. When you get her to the auto dock in Vera Keys is hotel room, it fixes it, the surgery heals because of that. Then she has Vera Keys's voice. She then uses Vera Keys's voice to open the elevator to the vault in the bottom of the Madre, and then the gold bars, and you leave and whatnot. You let go. So that's pretty much everything on Christine. Depending on which way you end the DLC, she's either alive or she's dead. Just kind of the way it is. Uh, so I have a little behind the scenes stuff, some notable whatnots. She's the third shortest character in the game. Her height is only 92% of the normal size. The other shortest characters are Sunny Smiles, which is 95%. Sammy Withers at 92.5%. The Gamora Floor Manager at 90%, which is incredibly funny. And the shortest being Irate Ida at 85% of the regular height. Even though she only appears in Dead Money, you can also hear her, uh, her voice before the Vera Keys voice, in Old World Blues and Lonesome Road. That's Christine Royce. That's Lore. Sorry, what's that? Sorry, come again? Back to the jungles of Neo Vietnam. I'll I'll tell his widow, <laughs> even though he's still alive. <laughs> Guys, that was um, Kyle's chief sergeant general. Um, he's been called back to the jungles of Neo Vietnam. Um, just keep Kyle in your thoughts and or prayers. It's a very, very rough time for him right now um, with the Neo-Vietnam conflict and whatnot. And, you know, we got to talk about something quick. I, I don't think I've made it a big secret here that I'm not a big sci-fi space guy. Star Trek always seemed cool because it was politics. Star Wars always seemed okay because it was Westerns, but Star Wars never clicked with me. I've never really gotten into much sci-fi outside of that. But Starfield is coming out this year. I wasn't excited as much as I thought I would be for a new Bethesda IP. And behind me will probably be something that they've shown. Something either the one trailer that we have or this new video. I don't know. I saw this new video on Twitter. They look... It looks like they talk about it with passion. They talk about it how there's like a new persuasive m m mode a persuasive like mini game where you actually like have to try to convince somebody else something you're not just like my charisma is this high it's not like d well that's what i like about fall three it says percentages so you could still fail even if you have a high charisma where new vegas is just like you need 70 out of 100 to get this or, or it'll show you like you have 35 out of, out of, out of 40 or whatever and they talk about it. And like, honestly, the part that kind of got me the most was that there is a group of space pirates called, um, probably going to get this wrong when I say this, the Crimson Fleet. I might be right. I might be wrong. And like the fact that they're like, you can join the Crimson Fleet. That's all I want. I just want to be a space pirate. And you can, you, the way they made it seem is like there's three different openings that you can choose from. And honestly, I was actually talking about this with a friend. I think for as much as I love the Fallout games, I think the thing that is, that I'm not playing Fallout 4, again, one of the biggest things is that the intro takes 30 minutes. Fallout 3's intro is amazing. Like, it's really good. It really introduces you to the world in steps. It shows you how to do things. It gets you attached to these characters like that, right? For me, at least. For me. I'm speaking from my own experience. But it's too long. And Fallout 4's intro is such a railroad that it just, it's too long. Like, it would be one thing if, like, you were, it would be one thing if they put in, like, a patch or a, a mod. I know. Mods. Where just, like, you start at you leaving the vault. I already know what happened. Let me just do this, right? I, I wish that was an option. 
But to sit there like, oh, here's my wife, here's my baby, here's my this, here's my that. Bomb, what? vault call it. Like, I just, I wish it could just be, here you are, leave the vault. You've Like, you just have to, just, you have to play like four hours into the game and that unlocks right away. That's what I think there should be. And the idea that there's three different openings, that's the way they made it sound. I'm not saying this is concrete, but there's like a Western space cowboy. There's like another one that I don't really remember. And then one that was like a corporate, like greedy, give us your money. Like, you know, this is a sci-fi. So we use credits and that seems really cool. And I really like this. And like, I know it's Bethesda and they say things, Oh, there's going to be 200 or 300 endings for fallout three. And it was just a bunch of slides. I get it. it. Pisses people off. They say one thing and then something else happens. Bethesda's known for saying something and then something else happens. So there's hours upon hours of gameplay. It's the same radiant quest of go save this settlement. I know, <laughs> but I just have hopes. I think them working on a new IP because as even though there's only two Bethesda fallout games and one, uh, that is they published, but they didn't make directly that came out. It feels nice. Maybe that they're thinking more and I don't remember the exact wording, but they kind of want to go back to more old school RPG elements. And I feel like that's what a lot of Skyrim is missing for me where like, it's not like I like see, seeing here's my experience bar, like now pick a perk, go do some. And I know they have that in its weird way, but like, Skyrim is one of those games where I don't feel like I'm getting stronger. Where three, like Fallout Three, you have this feeling of like I don't have any ammo. I kind of want to balance between guns and melee, and then I kind of want to go here, do this, move things. Three, three, and like I, I know three is not the best Fallout game. I know, but it's my favorite. Like New Vegas is pretty balanced, I think. Um, it doesn't feel as balanced because they give you 15 weapons at the beginning, but you can get rid of those. I know. Fallout 4, Fallout 4, I, you know, you feel, you get, you get that pistol in the beginning of the game. And if you throw a couple into whatever the pistol, um, tree is, you feel pretty good. Then you get the deliverer and you feel like you can just mow down an entire city in Minecraft with that. I have hope and I want it to be good. And as someone who doesn't like, sci-fi especially traditional sci-fi of space to me sci-fi is like what happens when we're all dead because it's based in reality honestly that's probably why i like it so much because it's very much hey this city this city is destroyed it's derelict it's completely gone but how are we going to deal with this now that everything's back to, to some sort of semblance of civilization right i like this i like this kind of thing i like this kind of stuff but being a spaceman doesn't do much for me. But I'm excited to see this. And it's on Game Pass. I'm like 95% sure. So that means I get it for free. Which I have this theory that if you get a game on Game Pass, you don't have the connection with it that you would have if you bought it. Which I know is silly and dumb because I played Psychonauts 2 and I loved it. But I think it's because I had a connection with Psychonauts 1. But then again, I bought it digitally for like 15 bucks. So maybe I'm talking out my ass. But I feel like if I would have bought Halo Infinite with my own money and not just downloaded the multiplayer and played it for two weeks, I would have appreciated it more. That's just me. I want to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy the show, thank you for sticking around. You can get the show anywhere you can download a podcast. And we're on YouTube. Fall asleep with the playlist on, if I can say that without going against TOS. If you like the intro music, it's by Shane Ivers. You can get it at silvermansounds.com slash free music, where you can get all of his music, or at silvermansalads.com slash free music slash feather duster to get our intro track feather duster join the discord there's a link in the description below follow me on twitter there's a link to my twitter kyle's twitter is down there send him your thoughts and or prayers he is fighting for your lives his lives our collective lives in neo-vietnam again thank you to the patreon shout out to the red bubble if you want to support one time real quick we're real quick real easy you can throw us a couple bucks there i love you i hope you're safe um, I hope everything in your life is going accordingly. I hope you're content. Hug somebody this week. Call a friend. I'll talk to you next week. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Atomic Radio Hour Podcast. A Ghoulman Entertainment Production.